knows the resources that he has, but actually desperately needs to get a kill back. Flash Ooh. away from Johnny wants to get the auto, but no, wants to finish the job! No. Oh, turn back! Iski, oh, damage. Getting massively chunked, irrelevant. Oh, the There's the dominant Oscar! Just one tap on the top! Parus is dead. 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 To the EDC, we wanted to keep the movie review vibe here. So earlier today, we want we showed you some movie clips from Fnatic, and we have the main character himself, <laughs> Marek Humanoid. Thank welcome you so welcome. much for joining us. Thank you. We want to keep the spirit of what we did in Ready Check. So basically, we associated some Fnatic plays with movie um, movie posters. Here, I kind of want to play a game of movie critics. So let's call ourselves the Rotten Honey Fruits. Not to be mistaken okay. with any other website, of no. course. And it's no really simple. First. We're going to rank some plays from one to five. We're going to have three plays. Of course, uh, one is for could have done better, let's say. And five is for the best plays that you can get. So let's go with the first one. I get Butland Skirmish. Let's go. Let's go. Let's watch it. Ready? Let's go. That's a screen. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? It's a real <laughs> cinema. So let's look at this. What happened here, Takda? I mean, this looks pretty good so far, right? You get Fnatic, great TP ward in the bot side, and yourself able to come in on top of it. And then, I mean, even the fact that you just about managed to escape with your health, I mean, that was pretty exciting. That was pretty thrilling. Uh, I mean, for me, of course, uh, it was, uh, I think it was the mid laner calling for the TP behind bot lane. So he pretty much set up all mm -hmm. this entire play by himself. And I would give this a, a solid five. Solid right. five that we're starting really strong here. So certified sweet here in our matter. Uh, second play, shall we? I think it's going to be... Oh, yeah. You know what? Let's play it. Speaks oh, for a itself. horror clip, a horror clip. Yeah. It's a horror clip. <laughs> it's a horror clip, but kind of comedic as well. It's kind of like scary movie. You know? yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be scary, but it's hilarious as well. Yeah, because Oscar could have well. just altered the wave there and actually would have probably been all right. But oh, and oh. even the little bit of BM underneath the tower as well wasn't exactly the best. And then he ends up falling at the end of it. It's, it's a little bit unfortunate for Oscar to do that yeah. one. Uh, well, so in this one, I think uh, something with top laners and thinking they cannot get off. Uh, <laughs> he was too overconfident. He was saying, guys, I can't get off. It's fine. Invincible. Uh, obviously, it was wrong. So yeah. what, what is the rating for this one then? Uh, this is a, a two out of five. Yeah. Yeah, I'd even right. go one. Rotten I'd even go one, I'm not gonna here. lie. Yeah, That's that was not, not great. great. Yeah, yeah not, not, not the great prep, not the great like rehearsal for the parts. <laughs> it's sad for Oscar. <laughs> the last one we have, maybe? Yeah. Let's play it and see what we have. As we're gonna watch so this another was, uh, yeah. starting from top lane, but I think we're gonna transition yeah, to another Yeah, this kind of became an action here. comedy, yeah. which I really enjoyed, which was, you know, you got the play, which was like a really nice 2v1 on the bottom side of the map, and you're like, oh, this is sick, but then you kind of see SK on the opposite side and thinking, oh, we can do Baron, but halfway through, they kind of realize they can't actually finish this off, and then just forget that they've leashed it for you. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, if I'm judging it from their side, I would give this a solid one, uh, because, <laughs> they, yeah, I don't know what okay. they are thinking, doing Baron, uh, they don't even have that much damage on it. Uh, of course, we knew exactly what was going to happen, so uh, yeah. well played from us. Oh my yeah. God. Great mind games, the yeah. mind control was there. It's a great play yeah. from Fnatic, but the rotten honey fruit on the side of SK here. Yeah, I mean, look, it's been a bit of a, yeah. a horror state for SK for the last couple of weeks. Their mid game has not been great, and uh, I don't know, it feels like they need a new director. They need something that can fix this, because it's not yeah. been great. As I said in Ready Check, I'm a huge fan, Mike, and I wanted to recreate it's another so of these pictures here, as you know them, so if you can hold this here to the jet behind us, actually. The camera is there, if you want to look here. Oh. And... Beautiful. Absolute cinema. <laughs> Casters, oh. over to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to be honest, that movie sucked. Um, <laughs> that was a rough one. Congrats to Fnatic. Like, they played great. If, if they really did mind control SK, if they mm. developed mutant powers, evolved genetically in the 20 minutes or so of that game, yeah. Very different story. Banger movie. But if it looked exactly like it did, which was one team leashing Baron to 3k <laughs> health, walking away and giving it away, then that's rough. That's not, you know, it's not my favorite script for a movie, I think, ever. I think uh, on top of that, the other plot twists 
with invading the jungle and then dying on tier two and the back and forth throws. Those are some crazy twists. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like M Night Shyamalan is out here watching these Fnatic Big SK fun. games. Like, oh, 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 I never would have thought of that. that. That one's tricky. That said, Rumble band away. Zaya Ash band away as we get into our game for Team Vitality versus Giant X. That is not surprising, not much of a twist. By first pick, based on our previous game, also would not be surprising. Reminder, Vitality with five wins are locked in. Giant X are still fighting after their win versus Rogue to lock themselves in, but their schedule is tough. It's Vitality today, Team Heretics tomorrow, uh, and of course, VDS have locked playoffs due to that previous Fnatic win. Every win does matter here for GX, especially Giant X. Uh, something that's really important for both teams is they both love to Leah Vi. We saw it a bunch from Giant X yesterday, and what's really interesting is the dynamic between these two teams. We know Vitality absolutely love to play early game, really explosively, whereas Giant X, they like to scale. And I think you were casting the game yesterday where first blood was at 18 minutes. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't think that was Giant X's fault. That's true. I'm going to put that one on Rogue. Sorry, Rogue. Lines up more with, with their MO. But we'll see if Giant X... Yeah. I think the one thing that Giant X have done, we've seen them do a few times this split, and it's not my favorite look for them because it requires very specific things in the draft. One of those things usually being a champion like Ash, which is banned away, but it's these high prio bot lanes. They try to leverage that tempo, try to leverage those early advantages to get a lot across the map mm -hmm. without having to you know risk these bigger fights. But on the upside, you're playing as Team Vitality, who will risk anything for anything. They will send five members in for a Scuttle Crab. They are not afraid to fight at a moment's notice. Yeah. Some OP picks still available. Callista's still open. I think uh, you could just lock topside here with Ari Renekton type deal. Smolder! I don't think we've seen this in a little while. I feel like ever since G2 lost against Fnatic with like five gajillion Smolder stacks, yeah. people are maybe less immediately excited about the Smolder, more willing to see some of the weaknesses. But the big thing we talked about in week one is, look, if you have counter pick support, so uh, there's room for the Smolder to really take over. So I think what the, the conversation Vitality have had is, you know, we don't think that Giant X are good enough to snowball and make the game volatile enough to get to Dragon cleanly before the Smolder can take over. Because Callista's open, right? You have a lot of tools still to make bot lane volatile, secure Dragons, and secure that win condition, and accelerate the game, but they just don't think Giant X is capable. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a Callista lock in for Patrick. He's definitely a Callista player. Draven's up too. Just depends what their angle is to be able to, you know, make bot volatile. Varus could work as well. Yeah, Brom not bad to Draven. Could be a solid option. We'll see how Giant X want to approach this one. Kogma, Kogma Brom, of course, the G2 classic counter. But a lot of hovers happening here. Not sure which of these are Jackie's inclination, which of these are Patrick's. It definitely has to be something that can make bot messy. You really, really want to make bot side messy. Versus Smolder. So then you can eventually pop summoners and turn into dives as well. Yeah, you do. and this is kind of the uh, the thing about Smolder in a draft, right? Is that if you can't outscale, you're not, or you're not yeah. going to more likely than not outscale. So you usually need to pick something that is going to be proactive. Rakan, all right. Obviously, Braum doesn't really have any early tools to immediately interrupt Rakan as he dashes in. But the follow-up damage is always kind of the tricky bit. Zai also already banned away, which limits that pairing. Yeah. Because you know, uh, yeah, Rakan, you can go in, you can get the knock up, but if the Unbreakable was there, you're probably not hitting the Smolder. Yeah, I think Renekton rises up in priority now um, for both teams because it works really well with the single target that they both have. Aatrox ban, classic blind pick that they're denying away. Could also be setting up something like the Gragas, which works really well, uh, really poorly into oh. the Oh, there it is. All right, guys. I'm just saying that's a dangerous drinking game to play. I respect it immensely, but be careful. Stay safe. Yeah, so blind picks, Gragas and Cassandra, I think are definitely the ones up there. And then you counter pick stuff like Nah into it. Oduamne, he also loves his rumble, but that's been taken away too. So, how do you round up this composition for both teams? It's a damn good question. I'm still just worried about the AD, man. I, I don't know what you really yeah, do I, here. I think it's Callista. I think you have to go something like Callista, Rakan isn't a bad duo. You have insane team fight as well, and that way you could snowball the game. I just think there's so much pressure on Giant X to out execute and to be the team that are making things happen. Yeah. And given how many little hiccups we've seen in so many of their games that normally feel very rehearsed early game, they feel like a very well practiced team in terms of early game planning. It's a tall task against Vitality, who are absolutely willing to, yeah. to skill check you. But the Callista you mentioned, Varus, the other kind of lane yeah. dominant pick they could go for. Problem is, Callista is also soft uh, countered by Vi as well, right? With that lockdown. Yep. So it's, it feels like a really <laughs> nice rotation that Vitality have. <laughs> yeah, team is kind of, you know, you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't right now. So credit to Team Vitality on this first three. Yeah. I think, you know, Braum blind isn't my favorite thing, but it does limit a lot of the options that are conventionally good into Smolder. Yeah. This is new, by the way. We don't often see Odo get R5. Very often he's blind picking his comfort top laner, stuff like the Rumble, stuff like the Renekton, and, you know, he never, ever gets but what is What does he have up his sleeve? Oh my god, is it? No, no, sorry, these are, these are classic, just 
cover. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. Getting don't excited. be baited. Don't be no, baited. I'm, maybe I'm so getting baited. It's not photons on small again. getting baited. I was, I was thinking, <laughs> might be time. No chance. No chance. Syndra. That's really good. That's Syndra's. new. That's like old school. Old yeah. school answer. Tilia hates control mages. Yes. Right? Syndra can harass through the wave. Tilia can't. So she just gets blasted. On top of that being a great pairing of Vi, because you should both press R. Yeah. Also, you can, interrupt, nice. you can interrupt Recon Engages, you can interrupt Relegages. It's so easy yeah. to just QE in their direction when a fight starts. Photon might be forced onto the Cassante duty here, just the relative safe blind pick. And now I think a lot of pressure on Odo's shoulders yeah. to pick something that can really Udia? definitively win top. Udia Rek'Sai. It could be. It oh, be. there we go, Dracos, okay. Well, I mean, they just picked, that was the context that was picked last time for, for BB, right? It was picked earlier. The yeah. Rek'Sai, I mean, he's considering it. Is it going to be their option? Oh, you please. were probably going to get one tapped by Syndra if you're not, you don't have at least it, a little would... bit of gold under your belt. Oh, no. I think we got him baited. No! It would have fit the bill, right? A weak side top laner that can scale in his own right. Sometimes, you know, people like the flavor of the month, and sometimes people like yeah. vanilla ice cream. And Odawamne is a vanilla ice cream man today. It's, we'll see how, classic Odo. how that works out for him. That's a Godo picking his comfort picks. I mean, like, as far as top laners are concerned, you have those top laners that play one of every single champion. Odo, he plays like five of the same one over and over again. Yeah, he's there to support the team, you know? And I, and I yeah. respect that. That's the angle sometimes. You don't always get to pick for yourself. You don't always get to pick the spicy Rek'Sai. So it's really important for Giant X to make bot side volatile. They have a really, really good tools to do it. Great counter pick with Rakan into the Braum. You have insane trading tools with the Callista into the Smolder as well. You've got to make trades happen. You've got to pop flashes. You've got to dive bot lane, convert that into dragons and dragon soul point, and hopefully accelerate the game to the point where the Smolder isn't online, but you have soul. It's a difficult task. Bot lane is the strong point as you highlight in the upside yeah. for Vitality. Mid jungle, lethal. The Vi set up with a Syndra post level six, easy, easy pickings. That said, Syndra champion who, if you can get her flash out early, really suffers, doesn't have really reliable defensive tools outside of the scatter of the week. So we'll see who can find the edge here. And of course, for Giant X, this is big. They need to win both games. Uh, and really, it's, uh, you know, one step at a time, one mm -hmm. day at a time. Vitality, Team Heretic's coming off. So this is step two. They took down Rogue. It's a three game week, need to win all three to bring it home. And Vitality, already sitting pretty, already locked in playoffs and drafting with a lot of confidence. It's a tall task ahead of Giant X. Absolutely. I think Team Heretics as well tomorrow. Yep. Really rough games. But it's time to get into the game. Let's get started. And on to the rift we go. Probably our only moment of peace here at the start of this game. I don't want to cast or curse it, but as you highlighted, bot yeah. lane set to be very, very explosive. So I think you have avenues to play as Vitality post six, but pre six, you're gonna be a little bit of a stick in the mud. You can't really do too much. You haven't got great setup, you know. You don't really want to do stuff too much down bot side with Smolder. So I'm really looking at what Peach can do. Rel, a champion that is very good at invading early. You have. Decent enough level one with Callista, then potentially you can make something happen. I mean, the oh. setup is there. You get the you get the prio. Maybe you can invade. Maybe it is just vision and ensuring that your bot lane can continue to trade aggressively. But see what they can do with the the pressure advantage we expect Minions them to get. Giant X, going for a bit of a set play here on level one. Mm -hmm. So Hillisang marking that point if they choose to go, should be fine. Uh oh, those people in the audience are sweating. <laughs> But yeah, this is what you normally see from Rel. You can just level one, uh, level one or level two invade as Rel because the Q damage and the clear is so quick. Yeah. You have so much threat onto these camps that this kind of map split, if this does convert into a map split, could convert into dives down bot side onto the smaller. This is exactly what you want to do from GX, and I'm really glad we're seeing it because I don't think GX had the best early games to be able to pull something like this off. It requires a lot of finesse. Mm. Very clear game plan, a telegraph game plan. You can see Vitality setting up knowing the level one was there, just trying to get a bit of poke back. They're not really expected to win out here early on. Remember when you look at Smolder, in case you've somehow forgotten, it's a lot about just getting space in lane to, to farm with Q, hit some of your abilities for poke, just continuing to stack up, just survive really in lane phase until you get to that crucial stack break point. So my eyes are on the trades down bot side. If they can somehow find a lot of damage and convert it into a dive. Like really this. good knock up. Absolutely fantastic start to that play. No unbreakable yet for Hillisang. This is the weakest point in the lane, I think, for this duo. Karzi gets a bit of poke back. And Peach already here. It's a telegraph play. The thing is, Vitality know this is coming. They have to know that this is coming, but they're still just level one. They're just going on to Peach. Trying to harass Peach. This is smart. Makes the dive that much more difficult. 
They're actually getting away with so much. Ignar really wasn't in a position to cover. Now maybe they kill Hillisang. Hillisang flash to safety. Knock up there. Good immediate lockup. Patrick flashing in first blood. It's clean. Down Hill he goes. So I think the problem was Hilly just overreached a tiny bit. They had pushed Rel off of the dive, and you could see Daglas beelining down. Daglas had a choice, right? He could cover the dive that he knew was going to happen if Rel stuck around unchunked, or he could go invade and uh, split the map. Instead, Daglas chose to come, but that was all wasted because Hilly overreaches and gets picked off. The initial chunk is so good. It, is. it makes it the dive so much harder, so much trickier. But uh, yeah, then you overstay. One second too long, you instantly get punished, and now the Callista has an early item advantage, which he already has an early scaling advantage. So, so watch Daglas. He can go topside now and continue clear and get to his level 6, but... Hold that thought. Uh, BTO now off. in the difficult position Cinders also find themselves in. Uh, when multiple members collapse on you from multiple angles, scatter the weak, not enough! Jackie's now getting a kill, and we talked about it. Giant X, not the cleanest early games. This game, damn clean so It's far. going really well. So much faster of a first blood than yesterday. And Ignar, I specifically want the highlight. Coming out of base and finding another knockup, and this is what we talked about with Vitality's draft, right? It doesn't have the firepower early. You kind of are scaling for level six, and even then, you have one avenue of play, and that's through mid-jungle. So, GX just capitalizing. Well done, thus far. And good to see Peach kind of integrate into this game plan. Both he and Ignar working together, something we've been wanting to see from this duo. Oftentimes it has felt like they're very desynced. Odo doing well on the top side too. Not the flashiest counterfeit, but definitely good early matchup. Yeah. I feel I'm uncertain. Aragon, we haven't what? seen this a lot from GX. I don't know how to yeah, feel. Because it's, it's, it's strange. great. It's Maybe. really great. And are they just turning? Is this just the GX thing? Just whenever their backs are the against the wall, run. the miracle run? It happens. It happened last year. I'm so tired of saying it though. <laughs> We're gonna need more ways to describe the micro, but if they if they make playoffs, second place summer twenty twenty three playoffs, they went from tenth to second. Yeah, they it's made again. season finals. Crazy. I'm not okay. We're one step at a time. Yeah, maybe, right? maybe. <laughs> beating Rogue, I don't think we would call the start of the miracle run, given that Rogue are in a really tough spot right now. But beating Vitality, okay. Another win tomorrow. Don't want to get ahead of myself, but the narrative might be coming yeah. back, folks. So the problem is. These are great kills and all, but the, the, it's also only a 1k gold lead and it's... Yeah. <laughs> we might be they haven't locked, a they still bit. two wins. All right, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves they here. They still need to get to Soul because it ultimately in Smolder games, what it comes down to is Smolder versus Soul. Which one's more OP? And usually people have funny opinions on that. You know, mm -hmm. they'd rather have Smolder than Elder Baron and Soul at the same time. Got it, yeah. So it's still on Giant X, not the fumble, and secure every single neutral objective which has been a struggle for a lot of our teams. Mid games have not been clean this split. Very few teams have been able to just hold on to a lead and snowball a game out if their lead isn't, you know, 5K, 10K mm. early on. These overwhelming gold numbers where you can just afford to make mistakes. Pressure here on the bottom side. Look at Kazi. Kazi low, but Dagwas is here to cover. Peach just has the dragon. As long as GX don't overextend here, it doesn't matter too much. They can just walk in, get one auto, get the plate. But will they commit for anything else? Yeah. Ping's coming down on the wave before as well, so you can tell Rel Dagger. Arzi with the sneeze. Chunk. Peach now here. Body block comes in from Hillisang. Unbreakable cooldown. Decently long at this point in the game. Do they want to go for the redive? Peach, just a bit of poke, has red buff, but needs to be careful here. One, two, three. On the Kakasa blow stacks, will be forced to crash down out to safety. Daglas doing a really good job and just shadowing his, uh, his bot lane. Pretty Jackie's good. his. He has just mana not missed any of these flicks backs. He's just calling his shots yep. on VTO every time. And VTO now down and all, but uh, VTO saw his flash. Jackie's no flash, no TP. Now going to be re recalling here. Buy there to shadow if they want to go for the push out. So overall positive trade for VTO. Absolutely. Still flash for VTO though. So any kind of play onto him isn't going to be too great, but my eyes are on Daglas. He's still level four. Usually junglers hit level six about seven to eight minutes. So. Dinging five is really good, but you know, a little bit far behind. Any playmaking with the mid jungle, which we highlighted before, is going yeah. to be a little bit delayed. Peach probably one or two camps off. Dagos probably about three at this point in the game. Ignar, nice knockup. Kakusa blows, dashes out to safety. Fourth auto doesn't come through. GX again, another play on bot side. Patrick getting further and further ahead. 650 gold lead. Karzi, though, 38 stacks, not, you know, not terrible at this point in the game. Not ideal, certainly. Mm. But I think. Kazi could be happy. He just got a reset, and now he gets to farm freely, right? Nothing going to happen too much. And if he does get attacked, they can cross map onto the grub. So I think Vitality mostly happy with the situation. Okay. 
Good bit of poke. VTO just continuing to harass. Of course, once Vi does get level 6 and starts to walk mid lane, Jackie's is going to be in trouble because he is flashless. Daglas will hit level 6 before Jackie's flashes back up. So pretty clear opportunity space there for the side of Vitality. I wonder if we'll see Ignar just beeline to the grubs as well, because there's a timer now where Callista can't be dove. And he could just run through mid and potentially contest, because you could see Daglas wants to contest them. Yep, level 6. For Daglas, does he want to use the ult? Photon trying to find the angle and has the ghost if they want to use it. Odawamne has flash, will flash back into the brush. Boomerang Black trying to get extra movement speed. The pullback oh, is there. Ulti as Photon goes all out. A quick kill pickup. Odawamne caught overstepping on the top side of the map. And that kills any kind of grub play for GX. You can see Ignar was trying to move through mid, but managing to find the pick onto the mini nerf from Vitality. Daglas, extremely decisive. Finding a pick onto Odo. And no TP either. Again, his next ulti is going to be off cooldown before Jackie's flashes back up still. And Odo's flash is also down now. So the opportunities for Daglas in this game are everywhere. GX still really need to leverage that power of the bot lane. They've gotten a lot of pressure on bot side. They've gotten those plates, but it hasn't really transitioned to any objective past that first Drake. And now because of that pick onto Odo, as you highlighted, Grubs easy for the side of Vitality to pick up. That said, they don't really have anyone topside. But luckily for them, GX have no resources committed here at all past Odawame. Giant X fishing mid, but Vetio does have flash. So likely nothing going to happen, but Odo. Unlucky. Yeah, Minina trying to get Deep Ward onto the respawn camps. Hello, Sang. Oh no, Patrick. Mom on the way in. Patrick not interested. Did not sign up for a family dinner. We'll just back away. And this is the thing, now they've got control because Ignar keeps going mid to try to help out Jackies. Hello. Now they're roaming back down to bot lane. Four members committed here for the side of GX. What can they get? No TP's Karzy up for Vitality. Up. Flash out. Karzy still has cleanse available, trying to get away. Hillisang very likely to drop here. Knock back there. Where are you at, audience fans? <laughs> Gotta make sure you commit. It's very important. Oh, no. If you write something on a sign, you have to commit. Okay. Very important to me. I missed the sign. I missed the sign. What was the sign? Uh, I'm not going to go into it. I'm not sure if we're supposed to go into it. <laughs> but they know what they need to do. Karzy knows what he needs to do, too, which is get out. The cleanse? Yeah, this is rough. Unnecessary. He was dead already. GX just continued to get kills on the bottom side of the map. 1.5k gold lead. Feels good. That's exactly what they needed to get control back. No teleports up of Vitality, so GX just make a play down bot side and on the dives, and only two plays left to take down bot two. They're accelerating the game really well. Take a look at this replay again. Kazi and Hillisang. Kazi's out of mana with no ultimate, so there's no heal. Hillisang manages to sidestep some spells, the knock up in particular, buys a little bit more time, but they can just regank. I think Kazi could have walked further back and potentially gone on away, but the whole of Vitality tried to make it to him, and he's just run down. Yeah. At this point, the, what what are you cleansing, bro? Why? This is the what this happens all the time. People who are like they just want to get their little Captain Jack moment. And I was saying, there's there's so many resources coming in there. They're, he was saying it's fully expected to die. I think the best thing that they could have hoped for is that Karzy could have backed off sooner, maybe kept his life. But there's no way that someone doesn't drop there. There's just overwhelming man advantage for the side of GX. Yep. And now dragons up, giant X posturing. Vitality also seem like they want to contest, but I'm questioning it a little bit. That's a very strong jungler for the side of Giant X. Already completed item, and this Glista's no slouch either with half a, uh, all of the components. So yeah. Fully expect this dragon to go to the side of Giant X. Knockback clean. Bit of damage onto Jackie's. All still there for VTO. Daglas tries to get the Q flash in, but a clean flash back from Jackie's. VTO's so still stacking. Remember, Cinder also has a scaling opponent. Needs those shards. It's so fully empowered abilities. It's interesting. I kind of expected them to go topside and cross map the dragon, potentially dive a mini now. I think that's the angle you have to have here with your vitality, because you're certainly not contesting second dragon here. But instead of bringing people topside, they're just shadowing the Syndra who has flash. Maybe you get push out and you can go up topside as a way to dive Odoomne on this Nar. I think the struggle for GX, you have to be incredibly decisive still, right? It's yeah. not that the smolder instantly scales if you stop paying attention to him, but you need to make sure that you're making positive plays in other places when you do take resources away from bot lane. But that is Scuttle. Quick pick up there is good vision in mid lane. Spots VTO. Of course, the minions would have done it too, so maybe not the most important work. Yeah. GX taking three second Drake, and this is certainly one way. You talked about it. A lot of people feel like uh, Smolder greater than all of the superior late game buffs, but I don't know, the pace that Giant X are picking up these Drakes, very likely that they're going to be able to start contesting for Soul soon. So, five minutes now until Soul Point. Ideally, you can test that as a smaller team. Like, that's the, that's the dream, right? But you have 73 stacks on Kazi. 
It depends on how strong he can get. That's a bit low yeah. in my eyes. I think yeah. in LCK we get a 19 minutes. You got 225 uh, generally. And it does amp up as you hit the break points, right? Because you get the AOE at 25. 125, you get a bit more. And the 225 is obviously the Elder buff, right? So once you get to 125, it gets a lot easier to get those stacks. But they also really haven't been able to trade much in bot lane effectively. And that's the other portion, right? You want to last hit minions with your Q and you just want to hit enemy champions. So... Good on GX to slow this skit stacking down. It really was the call out as you highlighted in the draft. I feel like when you lock in Smolder Braum blind, you just say, you aren't good enough to end the game. And GX now doing everything in their power to prove Vitality wrong. But the Syndra and the Smolder have huge scaling, right? Syndra absolutely amazing. Like you said, keeping Orkana away, really good into the Callista, all, all the scatter of the weeks. Yeah, if you fight front to back, this is gonna be tricky. But it's really getting to that point, that's the problem. So it looks like what Giant X are gonna be doing is they're going to ping these waves and then potentially dive to cross map the grubs in, and potentially give up the three, the six grub buff to Vitality. They really, really want to dive the Smolder again. But there's nowhere really that Vitality have enough pressure to leverage grub buff at yeah. this point in the game. It might change as we get later. Hosang walking in. Unbreakable coming out a bit ahead of schedule. But Daglas is here first. Do they feel confident enough to pull the trigger on this play? The pullback waves are going to go. Ignor already pulled back at the start. Karzi. Happy to have the kill, and again, Giant X. They just needed an extra second. They thought they spotted the window of opportunity when the Unbreakable was down, but now it's Patrick who's in oh, trouble. The follow-up is there. There's no way he gets out of this one. Jackie's on the back side of the fight. Peach now going in, but they don't have the damage kill. Everybody, the flip-back on the two is clean. Karzi flat, flat, flapping his way out to safety. Peach desperately trying to kill the Smolder. Meanwhile, Photon body blocking, oh, no. healing. Peach remounting, chasing down the little dragon. And now it's just... they go for Daglas. Bounces off his teammate's head. And it's just yeah, a full 5v5. The whole team comes down, teleports down bot side. And the problem was that the bailout from the Callista, Patrick's Callista bailout, was used to engage. So Ignor goes in. The problem is then the teleport comes through because of the teleport advantage. If we take a look here. Fate's call so early. Yeah. So there's no out for Ignar, right? He goes in, engages, gets CC locked with the Braum passive. The teleport comes through and he just gets knocked up by the Vi as well. That's oh. rough. Because he has flash, you have to wonder if he if he had battle dance, if he just flash battle dance and yeah. then goes in. But obviously in that context where you get chain CC'd, you don't have the opportunity to flash out. And the thing about Braum is, yeah, you can beat him in the laning phase, but as you get later in these grouped up fights, the concussive blows just makes it impossible for Callista to get away from any of these champions. Yeah, and that's in the context of this draft, this is an absolute disaster. You cannot be trading evenly like this. And this is why we highlighted that Giant X have a lot of pressure. This composition. I think the word I used was finesse that you really need to play this out cleanly. There's a smolder. Now Giant X don't really have access to the eye. Ignar can backstep, but Harold not even really gonna reset that much, so we're in a bit of a yeah. leash situation. This time around it's a Herald, not a Baron. But Vitality says thank you very much. It's not terrible. Giant X was soft contesting that, seeing if they could fish for a steal whilst Odo is bot side, but Vitality gonna pull the trigger immediately and place the Herald down mid. Alright. Dropping this, so they're gonna try to break another tower as well or go for a tier two. What's the angle with dropping it so soon? Demolish proc is there. Tower not gonna drop fast enough, so Harold will fade away. Vitality gonna back off before they can quite finish it. Nope, they've got the DOT. That's the three stacks on the grubs from earlier paying off. Trading evenly. With a smaller team composition, it's always really, really scary. And now they can just some send someone to recall, catch bot wave, and reset the map. It's a nice game state for, uh, for Photon and Vitality here. And honestly, well played for Vitality because this is not a game where they have just sat back and yeah. mitigated plays and just tried to like slowly lose essentially until the Smolder comes online. They've been punching back. They've been punishing GX. They've been making plays of their own. And I think you know, that's, res that's respectable in the context of a game where it would be really easy to just feel complacent knowing that you have the theoretical late game trump card. Yeah, really leveraging the Vi and the Syndra combo, I feel like that single target burst Especially down in the bot side skirmishes. But now, Dragon, Soul Point we highlighted, it's been five minutes. This is what matters. Because if you lose this, if you're the side of Giant X, you delay your soul. And you really don't want to delay your soul. You need to force Barons, you need to get Soul Point with this Callista composition. It's a smolder. Yeah. It's the pressure again, there was pressure in this draft the moment the call out was there from Vitality. They said you need to play faster, you will lose this game. GX responded to the call, they picked the Callista, yeah. and they were successful in the early landing phase. Now the lead has slipped away from them. It's a very small lead. I still think they're stronger overall, just given the power of Callista on a single item, but they need to find a way to leverage that power. And Patrick gets caught out here. 
and could all fade away. Jackie's going forward with the flick back, unbreakable, already used before the fight kicks oh, off. There it is. Now looking for the re-engage here. Jackie's just continuing to free fire. Good damage now coming forward. Patrick is getting to run rampant in this fight. VTO has to find the angle on the scatter of the week, but he doesn't get it. Pick on to Hillisang to kick things off. So much snap engage coming out from the side of Giant X. They just press one knockup, a one engage, and you can chain that off of it with a Talia W, where there's a Rakan knockup. It's so easy to follow up on. So even though you're a Braum with Unbreakable, it doesn't matter, you can't face check. Giant X leverage it. Yeah. And I think it's really important that you try to contest the Braum there. If you let him use Unbreakable when yeah. it's convenient for him, that champion is insanely broken. But if you walk up, you force it out early, and then pick the fight, definitely feels like you have what you need to come win out. And keep in mind, double lock it as well. I think very aware on the side of GX that there's a lot of upfront burst damage, and if they can just survive that, that things will work out. But VTO will respond to the bot side play, to the third dragon, to the sole point going to GX with a tower on the top side. Yeah. Really, for this next dragon, though, fishing for two items, I feel like. Your Crypt Bloom or your Void Staff for the Syndra, your Frozen Heart or your Randuins for your Kasante, and then your Shojin or your Smolder. It's going to be really important that they make these breakpoints, otherwise it's not going to be contestable, right? We saw just how one-sided that was, especially if Giant X get the jump on them. And I think, unlike a lot of other AD carries, Callista has that natural objective control, which makes things so much easier. Yes, Ren Smite isn't perfect, there is room to contest, but if they get first set up, it's so hard. If this becomes a game with a different AD carry where it's about really, you know, pushing in waves and breaking down towers without Baron, uh, it gets a lot harder because Smolder still slows that down, even with the cooldown nerfs. But when you can just walk to Baron every time you push a mid wave, very tricky for the enemy team to do anything. I think some of the best, like, plays that you can make between the Dragons here is if you send Vi down bot side and potentially dive the mini Gnar, I think that's the easiest angle of attack that Vitality have, but it doesn't seem like they want to do that. It's just, mini Gnar is so damn squishy, and Odo is the least accelerated one on the side of Giant X. Certainly, Kassante had two items, and of course, a lot of that is because the items are much cheaper, Trinity Force compared to the Iceborne or the Frozen Heart. But Jackie's now grabbing yet another tower. So two to the side of GX. So Ping's coming down on the Gnar now. They're gonna try and collapse, but I feel like it's a bit too late because Gnar has crashed the uh, pushed the wave out. It just needs to sit back and chill in Fog of War. And good from Odo. We've seen a lot of players just overextend in the side lane as we get into these mid-game states, and those picks are usually what turn into these big objectives. 19 seconds till Baron spawns. Neither side probably going to want to rush it down. Close to good for contesting, but I don't think GX have quite the sustained damage that they need to force a Baron quite yet. They could start up Nash, right? Especially on this next Dragon spawn, they could flip the Nash for the, the first Dragon, especially if Vitality commits to the Dragon. Callista Smite. Yeah, I mean... Definitely there. The, the, the contest is for sure there. I think in three minutes, too, once the second item comes through from Patrick, it's a lot easier to take down that objective. Smolder's still a ticking time bomb. VTO about to hit 125 breakpoint. Oh, 120, excuse me, on the Splinter's of Wrath for Syndra. So I'd like to see Giant X move as a unit right now into Baron topside vision and then force Vitality to check into them at, with the threat of the Nash. Now you can see Vitality have full vision there, so they'd require sweeping out. I imagine though what Giant X will do is just relax and play for the soul. Yeah, and I think the reset came here for Patrick. Yeah. They will now contest. He has second item. He backs, he buys that. They've got a luxury item and a stopwatch for Jackies. We'll see if he can finish the Zanyas before the fight. But he is behind Callista pretty significantly. VTO 1.3k individual lead. He's gotten so much more CS. Pretty much all of that being CS. So I think Vitality know the Giant X are kind of fishing for this. Mid push for the side of Patrick. He can move over straight to the Nash and start this up, especially once they push out top with the Talia. They have a lot of DPS. It's not a slow Nash at all. So we'll start with the Threaded Volley, sustained damage of the Callista Autos. Maybe enough for GX to feel confident to start, but it is really about confidence. They need to pull the trigger on A play. Oh, Hilly. Like picking off Hillisang is once again the name of the game. This time, Hilly Alti going to come out to get some health. They don't get the flash, though, crucially. It's only the ulti cooldown that they really walk away with. Yeah, sidestepping that to Leah W was important there. If he got flipped over, it was just chain CC into chain CC. So managing to get out there, and in the end, the Baron Dance isn't going to secure anything. Now it's too close to Dragon, isn't it? So Vitality, what they can do now is sweep out the entirety of the top side vision, and then move to Dragon after, just in case that uh, the side of Giant X want to flip the Nash again. Definitely tough, though. Really want to for Odawamne be in a position where you can TP in as Mega. So it's it's hard for GX, despite the ability to get this pressure, really construct the perfect moment for them to get Baron. Ignar, though, invading, hoping to maybe find that flank angle. We'll clear out this little bit of vision from the blue trinket. Yeah. Ping's coming down. There's a really nice TP ward right there inside the river. 
doesn't look like they're going to use it. Vitya and or Photon TPing down as well. Uh, Photon's there. Maybe Photon can use that ward. Good spot. There's one behind the Raptors as well. Multiple good angles so you can TP in to kick a fight off. Odawam, Nay, no Rage. It will stack quickly in the context of a fight. Vitality using this TP to ensure they have full five members in this area. They do not want to give up soul. Wave relatively even. Yep. Single cannon creep going to do some damage, but Giant X aren't even going to worry about it. Happy to concede that goal just to keep their positioning. Yeah, you need Photon to face check, don't you? He's popped the Elixir of Iron to be extra tanky so that he can. Omne, patient. Wall off oh, to no, Jackie's, Jackie's getting picked. If they can just burn him down here quickly. But no, a flipback is excellent. Odoamne now trying to cover Mom. Coming in, Jackie's flashing out to safety, getting clipped by the edge. Odoamne with Mega. Vitality immediately pulling back from the choke. They see the window of opportunity as clearly as Giants do. They don't want to give anything up. Pull back again. Good. Q3 coming in from Photon to buy a bit more of an angle. TP from Jackie's is available. Vitality successfully have bought themselves space and time. Mini Nar about to come through from Odoamne. 15 seconds before he can start stacking Rage again. That's going to be big. Watch Ignor on the flank. He could get into the back line with Betio there. Peach has angles. the flash too. Charm the angle, the instant follow-up now coming through the flip back is clean! The execution flawless from GX. Hillisang now trying to pull back, no damage left. It'll be soul from GX, but they want more. They want another kill onto Hillisang. Photon running, and in the blink of an eye, Peach and Ignar flawlessly working together to finish the job. The flash is coming out from the jungle support of Giant X, managing to find the back line. Peach with the flash ultimate, Rakan with the flash knockup as well. And it's just vitality. They're getting rolled. And all I'll say is, Ignar Peach, finally. We've been waiting. There have been so many moments. Yeah. You would assume that this duel right off the bat would click and everything would work, but it finally feels in this game like it is clicking. So what happened here was Photon. He needed to face check. They managed to try and find a pick onto Jackie's, but that duo in the top side do not have any damage to burn down Jackie's. The ultimate almost takes him down, but he still has TP, so it's not the end of the world. They managed to use this chunk to force their way in, but then they don't have time to check the flanks. Look at that pink over here. It means that Rakan, Ignor on this Rakan, can make it over to flank and skill the team fight win. Now MP Photon is overextending on the side lane. Needs to live as long as possible. Pullback on Odoamne is good. Once again, going on soft as he gets the reset from the all out. We'll walk away fine. Two minutes and 30 seconds on this buff. But Vitality want to fight. They want to try and force these picks, ensure that Giant X cannot use this to start pushing out these objectives. Vitality. This is, <laughs> there's nothing to play for here. It's just the Thunderdome. But they just want to force a fight. You know? It's a, I think it's a soft fight. It's not a hard commit, right? Because they're still playing for those stacks on both Syndra and the Smolder. 225 is very close, so if they can take fights that aren't fully committal. Every hit that Karzi gets with an ability is another stack, right? Flap, flap, flap over the wall. Does still have his ultimate if he wants to clear the wave. I think they should be pretty willing to clear or back away from tier 1s, but they're not. Yeah. They've only lost that tier 1 bottom side. I mean, we've seen this. We've seen teams Good hold. Wall. Jackie's again trying to force the engage. Beautiful disengage from Hilly. Ignar now goes in, but there's no follow-up. So there was this game in the LCK, where they held something like four Barons and four Elder Drakes with Smolderalt. Okay. Well, there's Smolderalt, then most of the wave is gone. My question to you, Dracos, is are you ready? Am I ready for it an infinite game? It was T1 versus Nongchim. I don't, I'm not ready for that. I cast this region for a reason. I'm not ready <laughs> for that. I want it. I want to see it happen, but I don't think I'm ready. Aragon, I think that would be an unreasonable task. I, I feel for my LCK, our LCK counterparts. You know, that's a tall, it's a tough order. And Karzi, 2 2 2, about to hit 2 2 5, which again, it, it's not the Cassid and Ding over to Lex uh, level 16 games over kind of vibes, which I also don't necessarily think is true for Cassid, and although it feels that way sometimes. But Hillisang potentially over committing a lot of resources being used to kill the Brahm, but Hillisang flashes back to the safety of Photon, still stunned up, trying to dash back. Extra little bit of shielding coming in. GX need to keep the ball rolling. Pressure on the top side, 50 seconds left on the Baron, they still got a cannon. BTO just gonna take it away though. Oh, no, it's got weak. Ignar just takes his time, just waits, goes past him, forces him to backstep. Flash out for BTO is clean, however. Karzi now ready to turn the fight, sneezes on him. Photon trying to get a bit more space to fall off damage onto Patrick. Patrick, oh, the damage jumping down, Smolder, looking for the resets! And it's a baby dragon, baby, and we've been here before! We know what happens! He's online, tick, tick, baby, time is up! And it's happening again, Draco. Soul versus Smolder stacks, which will win. But beautiful micro coming in from Vetio with that dodge onto the Rakan W. Take a look at this. He gets flanked. I mean, initially, Hillisan gets picked yep. by doing his thing. But there's such a nice sidestep out from Vetio there, where he sidesteps, buys enough time for Smolder to come. 
Yep, Hillsang, clever use to try to escape, but obviously more than enough sustained yeah. damage here. But the play that you're talking about happens at a moment. Wrap around, good from Ignar, looking for the angle of attack. Watch this, watch this. He W's forward, sidesteps back, then flashes the Rel Q. Why enough time now that the small is online, right? There's no threats for the small that he can just free hit. Yeah. And I think with GX watch that back, they're gonna be hitting themselves, you know? <sighs> he kind of, he has to flash at that point out to safety. You might have been able to hold the Rel Q, anticipate the flash, but it's a lot to ask in a tense moment like that when your adrenaline is pumping. And for Karzi, He's been beat up this entire game, doing now again? finally he gets to strike back! Fire rains from the sky! Dragon's not even involved, Peach now running. And look how quickly the pace of this game has changed. Vitality were on the back foot, but now they're looking to take over. Oh no, Peach is getting run down, going well. down Yeah, he should drop here. One, two, three, not quite able to get the fourth, crucially. Won't get sneezed on. And what felt like a commanding position, now it's less than a K goal difference. Mm -hmm. When you factor in scaling as well from the Syndra stacks, from the smaller stacks, yep. they're gonna be Soul Dracos. Yeah, so I think, I'm not gonna say this conclusively, but based on this single game sample yeah. size from today, Smolder is still very strong. Safe to say. You, you have to play perfectly. You have to close out the game extremely well. Oh, on the opposite soul. side, not as Smolder. Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, was, I was like, uh -huh. okay. You need to be, you need to be a little bit careful. But All right, Vietio. He had the fancy footwork in the previous play, but I don't think there should be any way for him to get out of this one, let alone grab a kill, as long as Jackie doesn't overcommit. One quick pick on the side lane, perhaps an angle for Giant X to regain control. Who are they trying to give this to? Are they trying to stall the death to make sure that he's down for longer so they can look for the next objective? It is 44 seconds to the soul. Oh, that's some Overwatch tactics, baby. Stagger the respawns. You love to see it. Oh, look at the TP. They're going to completely chase this down. Long range. They've got to kite up towards Photon. Confidence from GX as we talk about this decisiveness. They kill that baby oh, dragon! No. They've got a way back! Elder for GX! They've got no wave mid though, I don't they're think just, they can they're end. Just, they're just big game hunting Vitality members one at a time! Vitality had rested this game! They had regained control, but they're just split, they're just a little over eager. Giant X, fantastic punish! 10 seconds to Elder, these guys are gonna no up, and then it's the question. Can Smolder beat his mom? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought Hysterics keeps saying Shivana Smolder's mom. Oh, really, this is his dad. <laughs> Damn. But it's a it's a legitimate question. It's Can fair. Smolder overcome Elder Dragon? And we've seen it so many times globally. Yeah. It's tough. It's a universal question. Can any of us overcome our daddy issues? <laughs> it's hard. Something we all work on. Cars are gonna try to cover that in the last five to ten minutes of this game. Two minutes and thirty seconds where Giant X are just stronger. On paper, maybe Smolder can turn that back in the favor of Vitality, but it won't matter if they keep getting caught out. Baron up on the table now. You gotta assume it's all but taken for the side of Giant X. They're not even gonna bother contesting yet. They're just sending people down bot side, potentially yep. to try and get that tier two down bot. Why did you say it? You cast your curse, dude. <laughs> Why did you say that they could? They would have to, that you've seen the Smolder beat Baron and Elder together? <laughs> This should be the end of the game, but because of one baby dragon, it's uncertain, it's unclear, and now Odo potentially caught out. This is a, still a bold oh no. play. Will they try to pull back? If they go into Jackie's with the pullback here from Photon, it could be big. Smolder calling in Mom. Trying to buy a bit of time, a bit of space. And meanwhile, VTO pushing out. Not necessarily the split pusher I would have wanted to see, but Photon getting lower and lower. Engage from Peach completely whiffs, and that is big. Now the turn. Not enough burst to get through Peach, not enough to get him down to that threshold. Both sides painfully aware that they cannot afford to get low. Giant X backing off. They don't have another wave to play on. They don't have mid pushed out either. Yep. Ooh. Bits here. Getting bot lanes here too. Too much wave clear from the Syndra and the Smolder. Not going to be able to siege as well. And that's just going to stall out the Elder Drake. They've got to spend mean, their Elder Drake time running out from base. It's so awkward because you want to play on multiple lanes at the same time. But if you don't commit enough resources to the Smolder lane, they're just going to burn you. No, gonna I'm, reset on the map again. Yeah, and I gotta say, credit to Vito again. Good heads up play um, to yeah. to take that tier two, because if his team does get collapsed on, if they don't clear that wave, that could've been a game ender, but knows that he has the space, knows that he has the time. Of course, reminder that when Syndra ticks over to zero at this point in the game, that is just a little bit of a visual bug arena. It is just because she has reached max splinters of wrath stacks. So in that one LC game game I was talking about, they got Elder Dragon? Baron, the they, stole, they stole the global blue buff, blue buff, they stole the global red buff, they had every single buff on the map, and they still lost. So what you're telling me is if <laughs> Giant X 
win here, they're better than T1. Is that what you're trying to say, Aragon? Sure. Nice. Sure. <laughs> Transitive yeah. property. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bold. You should not have said yes to that. You will feel the wrath of the T1 fans. The giant X. It's... They've got these double cannon minions, but it, you can't body block the cannon minions. The Syndra QE just goes through. Ooh. Karzi has the wave clear, and we're going. Oh my God, we're going again. <laughs> you were right. How did we get? How did we get two of the weirdest <laughs> games to split back to back? Aragon. These have been bangers. Stop manifesting weird stuff. I mean, normal got... <laughs> League of Legends only, Aragon. <laughs> They've got a tier two to take at least in the mid lane. That should be relatively simple to take. It doesn't have to. You don't have to go straight into the base. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just so it's so rough now, right? Because JX were decisive. They slipped up once or twice, and it cost them dearly. Uh, you know, they've managed to fight back even against a smolder that's been fully yeah. stacked, but they're just struggling now to really get anything else. The snap engage is so good. So if Hillasang ever does the Hillasang, but pull the trigger. Now an engage onto two is oh, big. Go to one immediately going to follow up, and that should just be it. V2 goes golden, gets a brief moment. Karzy on the wrong side of the wall, getting away from the poke, trying desperately to hold on. Patrick getting chunked out. Well, Photon Pat trying to finish the job. Photon going in, unstoppable, wants to finish off. Patrick, Patrick dancing, diving, ducking. The clutch to lives. GX, what else can they get? Nine seconds left on the Baron. Can they push for anything else, or are they just too scared of this smolder? Patrick's chunked. They have to recall. I think Jackie's is going to TP in. He does have the teleport, but the wave clear's still there, and they don't have Nash. I don't know if you get a better opportunity than this. Okay. They think we can do it again. We will find another moment. They have they have great engage. We talked about it. Peach and Ignar together. I think Peach we're that for... time finding it. Are you ready for round 17, Drake? <laughs> I'm absolutely ready for round 17. I cannot say I was born ready. I don't think anyone anticipated this when I was born, but here we are. Great engage. Mm. Fantastic start to the fight. Good, solid turn from Vitality to try to get something back. Jackie's on the wrong side of the wall, still layering down some poke. And Patrick, really, if he dies there, this is a Vitality here fight for sure. Absolutely. You can see the dive coming in for Photon. Scratching the back of his head. Not quite making the lethal window there, but it, they don't get enough. Right, and when you don't have enough, you don't kill the wave clear, either the Syndra or the Smolder. You just can't siege. Jackie's having to recall. They don't even bother teleporting in to continue the siege. My question is, what is the last item for Patrick? What, what position is he in? He's got Terminus. Jack Show potentially. I was thinking is... Jack Show against the Syndra. Even if he yeah. has Pen, I think just if you just live longer, maybe that's enough. But Karzy about to get Life Steal, and only getting more stacks. It's 348. Yeah, I think uh, Jack. Oh, Hourglass. That's some tech versus the Vi ultimate. I actually like that a lot. That's really smart. I, I love any AD carry that can build this, frankly. I just think it's such a... It's obviously just the best defensive item in the game. Like, GA compared mm. to this item is trash because it's like... You don't get to pick your stasis. You don't get to pick what you dodge, right? And you come yeah. back, and if you're already losing the fight with a GA, you're going to lose the fight anyway. But stop watching at the right moment is so game-defining. Or, excuse me, Seeker's arm guarding at the right moment. It's why stopwatch is removed from the game. It's because it's so good. Yeah. So we're on the el second Elder Dragon, Dracos. Out of how many? Two out of X. Uh, let us know at LEC on X. <laughs> how many Elder Dragons do you think will be taken? Okay, start off good here. Mom called in. Jackie's getting chunked out. Ignar really. trying to disengage. VTO untouched off to the side. Oh, one right going in. Knocking both my members back to the wall, but Vitality peeling back beautifully. Karzy still standing for now, but he can't quite get back over the wall. VTO laying down a bit of damage, but Patrick goes stasis. gold, and the stasis pays off. Buys the perfect item to save the day. Karzy flicked back and Giant X might have just done it. Photon taken down. They want to march down the mid lane and end it here. And they found the engage they needed. They found it onto Hillasang, that pick. The stasis coming out into the Syndra ultimate and managing to find the flip back onto Karzy as well. And that's it. No more Elder Dragons, just the one was all it took. Smolder, not unbeatable, not unbreakable. Clean early game from GX, a sloppier mid game. But when push came to shove, they found the angle. They found the fights, and they'll find the win. Their run continues. Three wins now, tying up SK, fighting for top eight in the LEC, taking down the five and two Vitality. And one more Hillisang death for all those keeping up with the drinking games. It's a beautiful GX win. Incredibly important win too. On the Giant X miracle run. I, I don't, I, it's too soon, but also, yes. I believe, but also, From you're what right. I've seen, this is so much cleaner of an early game than we've seen in the past. They were never this decisive. They managed to get Soul. They ended the game versus Smolder. Yes, it looked a little bit dicey towards yep. the end there, but... Okay, enough. update. Currently, they have at least a tiebreaker in 94.5% of remaining scenarios. Um, they're, they're close, yeah.
and they're, if they win tomorrow, it feels like they're probably just, I'm not going to say 100% straight up block, but they're in a good spot. Player of the game at LEC on X, Jackie's Patrick or Ignar. I mean, you know it's our boy Ignar. All right, Patrick played great, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but we all saw the Rakan Rel synergy there coming together. Some beautiful stuff. When we return, an interview with Oduwamne. For now, we're going to head to a quick break. You know it as well. I also know you can dance. You should join me next time. And yes, I feel like you've also deserved a bit of a break. You've earned it. Thanks. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Good job. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. But this Ah, Dios mío de mi vida. I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before. <laughs> 